Hello there, it's Mrs. Pirro today. Um, okay, we're going to draw a Mother's Day um, card, and I'm gonna try um, to make this card using markers. Um, I originally drew this drawing with colored pencils, and you can do it that way too. If you do the colored pencils, you can do a little bit softer and finer kind of coloring. But we're gonna do a little bird called a chickadee, and this chickadee is sitting on um, some spring flowers. These are cherry blossoms. Okay, so I'm gonna move this off to the side. And we're gonna go ahead and draw first with our um, Sharpie marker, or maybe a pen would work, or even a black crayon. Okay, whichever things you have on hand. Um, I like to use the Sharpie marker because it doesn't smear when I color. So when I use the other colors in, in my um, drawing, I don't wanna have the black um, mixing with them and smearing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start at the top of my paper, I like to find the center. So I'm gonna start at the top and move to the center and come down. And I like to put about one hand's width of space um, above. And then this is going to be where I start the top of my bird's head. So we're gonna start with a small rainbow line and this is the top of our chickadee head right here. And then, um, we're going to do a little beak, like a triangle out the front. We're gonna split the beak into top half, bottom half. Bring this line a little bit past. For the underbelly of our chickadee, we're going to look at a half circle shape and it's gonna be on an angle. So the bird is kind of on a diagonal like this. And so I wanna be thinking um, down and up on a diagonal. Okay, so this is kind of going around almost a circle. If I was to finish the circle, it would look like this. Okay, and then we're gonna do a straight line. And this is gonna go all the way down and, and kind of extend to where the tail might end. And then I will finish the tail with another straight line and some little W shapes. And then we're gonna go up here, we're gonna put an eye, and the eye is hidden inside in this darker color on the top of this chickadee's head. So we want to make sure that the eye doesn't disappear in that black. So we're gonna put a little white dot in the middle. So draw a white, or draw another small circle that will stay white. We'll color this part in. And it's okay if you leave a little bit of white showing around the edges. Okay, now this is called a black capped chickadee. So we're gonna give him his little black cap and then he has this little white splash um, that's kind of showing under the beak. So this is gonna stay white. And then down here, this is like a triangle of black under his chin. Okay, so this we're gonna give a little bit of texture. I'm gonna take my Sharpie marker and we'll put some more um, color on this later possibly with like a a um, little bit of uh, colored pencil or crayon, but we don't wanna go solid black on this because then you can't see how fluffy and soft our bird is gonna be. So I like to use these texture lines and go in the direction that I think the feathers would be growing. And so this gives it a little bit of a darkness and it also gives it a sort of a fluffy look. Okay, so that's why I'm using this um, black marker to make these lines. All right, and now we wanna kind of show this dark wing that's on its back. So we're going to draw another line part way down on top of the tail, and we're gonna draw some longer W shapes, and these are going to be the feathers on the wing. Okay, on the tail we can do that as well and give it some texture. Okay, now in this picture, I can't see the bird's feet because they're hidden behind this flower. But I always like to um, add a little bit of a foot on a bird picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just imagine what where the foot would be. So it's gonna be, maybe the leg starts here. I did two skinny, uh, two lines really close together to make it look thin. And then one, two, and then one to the back, three. Okay, and then um, on this bird, it is a little bit of a, a lighter color here. Um, uh, so if you want to just sort of indicate that area that's gonna get that sort of tannish, yellowish color, you can do that and then the tummy stays white. 
Okay, right now our bird is just floating without um, doing anything. It has its wings down, so it's not flying. It needs a branch to stand on. So let's go ahead and draw a branch. I'm gonna start from the side of the paper and aim towards my foot. And then I'm gonna go up here, and when I bump into my drawing, I come out the other side, bump into it, come out the other side. You always have to pick up and, and hop over. And I want the branch to end somewhere in this area. Okay, and then I'm gonna make it a little thicker so that I have something to color. So if I just did a single line, I, I, it would be harder for me to color that in. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put a few more lines on here. At this point, I'm gonna put away my Sharpie marker and I'm gonna go ahead and draw directly with these um, Crayola markers. Okay, I think we can do the rest of the picture that way. All right, so at the end of each one of these um, little branches or twigs right here, we're gonna put a flower. And our flower is gonna have some little circular dots. So everywhere I think I'm gonna put a flower, I'm gonna put at least three maybe four of these little circles with my yellow marker. And that will be the center, okay? That's where the pollen sits. It's on the end of a little uh, piece, a little twiggy kind of a line there. You can always go in and add more flowers later if you don't think you have enough. And then cherry blossoms have kind of a whitish pinkish look. So I'm just gonna outline and they have five petals. So we're gonna do a little round petals and some little marks in them. Okay, so just a circle with two little marks. One, two, three, four, five half circles. Two little marks in each one. One, two, three, four, five. And you're just gonna go ahead and do that all the way around in each one of your flowers. Now, if they're not all the same shape circles, it's okay because when you look at, at um, blossoms or any kind of flower, depending on the angle you're looking at them, you might be looking at it from a side view or a top view, the um, shapes are gonna be a little different. So if one of them's bigger than the other or it's a little bent sideways, that's just actually following um, nature and you don't have to get too worried about how they look. As long as you've got about five petals on there, it will look like a cherry blossom. And cherry blossoms, again, have a, such a whitish, light-colored pink that I'm not going to color in each petal shape. I'm just gonna outline and put these two little marks in there with the light yellow dots in the middle, and that's all we need. Okay, and then we're going to put a little bit of brown marker on the branches. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill those in brown. And then at some point, we need some green. So everything always looks better in the spring once the green leaves and the green petals, or everything green starts growing, right? The grass, the branches have little bits of green on them, and so it looks a lot more beautiful. So we're gonna take some, some beautiful green and we're going to grow, go ahead and draw some leaves because the flowers and the leaves are all starting to bud out and look like springtime. New growth. New beginning every year, it's so wonderful. It's one of the reasons I love living in Michigan because everything kind of goes dormant and we have this um, winter period, which is kind of fun. We get to play in the snow and do um, cold weather, outdoor things, and then in the spring, it all starts over again. We get a new batch of flowers and growing things. So I'm gonna put a little green on different places. Now I wanna put some extra little shoots out here because sometimes there are some buds that have started, but they haven't actually quite bloomed out yet. So we're gonna do a little halfway open one here. So this is gonna look like almost like a little heart shape. Just a couple little marks, rounded marks here to help make it look like a real cherry branch, cherry blossom branch. Okay, now uh, we need to put a little bit more color on our, on our chickadee. 
So I'm going to take this gray marker. If you do not have a gray marker, maybe you could find a gray crayon or a gray colored pencil, and that would work just as well. So this can be a mixed media project. It doesn't all have to be marker. Okay, and sometimes a little bit less coloring is better. So I'm going to be leaving the um, sky just white, and I'm going to write a, a Mother's Day message on here. I think this is where I put a little bit more dark. I want to make sure I don't make the eye disappear. So I have to be careful to leave some white. And we're just going to call that um, highlights. Like when the sun or the light shines on something in it, and it looks a little lighter, even though it's a black feather, it looks a little lighter because it's got a little highlight on it. Okay, and so that is it. And now we just need to sign our picture, maybe write a Mother's Day message. I'm gonna sign my picture. I always like to sign my picture, put the year, and then you can write Happy Mother's Day. You can do any colors you want to on here. Just make sure you work on thinking about your spacing and how you're going to fit things in on your paper. Happy Mother's Day. And then you can say, you know, love and sign your name. All right, there we have it. A beautiful Mother's Day present that's handmade and personal artwork for your mom. Enjoy. Have a nice day.